Hello, online arts community. Welcome to Fleetwood Jordan Theater's Stay Creative in collaboration with Piven Theater Workshop, a journey through the history of Black theater, a series with me, Professor Bria Walker. Today's Black theater history lesson will be on the monumentally successful and groundbreaking 1921 hit musical, Shuffle Along. It was the first musical on Broadway that was written, directed, and performed entirely by African-American artists. Shuffle Along was a new musical conceived by the comedy team of Effie Miller and Aubrey Lyles with music and lyrics by UB Blake and Noble Sissel. It opened at the Howard Theater in Washington, DC in late March of 1921 and ran for two weeks. It later transferred to the 63rd Street Theater in New York City in May of 1921. It ran for 504 performances, an astounding feat at the time. Theater promoters and managers of that day were skeptical as to whether white audiences would accept a musical with an all-black cast because no black show had been successful on Broadway in over 12 years. The last successful black show on Broadway was the 1903 musical In Dahomey. The musical starred the immensely popular vaudeville comedy duo of Burt Williams and George Walker. It was composed by Will Marion Cook. The book was by Jesse A. Shipp and the lyrics were written by poet Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Shuffle Along was innovative. It integrated audiences. You had blacks and whites sitting together, lowbrow and highbrow folks attended the show. It was the first time a serious black romantic relationship was being shown on stage. It popularized the Charleston. It would be the first time a jazz score was featured on Broadway. It introduced syncopation. And it was the first time a female chorus engaged in high energy dancing and weren't simply decoration. The production renewed the public's interest in Black theater and marked a decided turning point in the history of Black entertainment and in the culture of the United States. Langston Hughes saw the show and said that Shuffle Along marked the beginning of the Harlem Renaissance. The plot of Shuffle Along centers on the characters of Sam and Steve, who run for mayor of Jimtown, USA. If either one wins, he will appoint the other his chief of police. Sam wins with the help of a crooked campaign manager. Sam keeps his promise to appoint Steve as chief of police, but they begin to disagree on petty matters. They resolve their differences in a rousing, humorous 20-minute fight scene. As they fight, their opponent for the mayoral position, Harry Walton, vows to end their corrupt regime, underscored in the song, I'm Just Wild About Harry. Harry wins the next election, as well as the girl, and runs Sam and Steve out of town. The original cast included greats, such as Eubie Blake, Noble Sissel, Lottie G, Gertrude Saunders, and Adelaide Hall. Some of the period's most influential Black artists were a part of the production. Artists such as dancer Josephine Baker, vocalist Paul Robeson, and composer William Grant Still, who was known as the Dean of African-American Composers, all got their start and shuffle along. Recording companies marketed all 18 of the songs from the show, including Love Will Find a Way, I'm Just Wild About Harry, which became President Harry S. Truman's campaign slogan in 1948, and shuffle along. The dances were such a smash that people such as Ziegfeld from the Ziegfeld Follies hired Shuffle Along Chorus Girls to teach his chorus girls the new steps. George Gershwin repeatedly came to the show and it is highly debated whether or not he stole musical riffs from the production. Fanny Bryce, who was currently in Follies, pleaded with F.E. Miller to add a show to their weekly lineup because she and other performers were on the same schedule and couldn't see the show. Three weeks into the run, the show became so popular that they canceled the Wednesday afternoon matinees and replaced them with Wednesday midnight performances. And these performances became heavily attended by fellow theater artists. Shuffle Along was so successful that 63rd Street, where the show was playing, was made into a one-way street to alleviate the traffic jams that were happening along Broadway and Central Park West as people tried to get into the show. 
Once the show eventually closed, several attempts were made to revive it. The first revival attempt was in 1933, but it wasn't successful. It was the middle of the depression and the fact that talkies, movies with sound were beginning to take over, didn't help. The second attempt was in 1952. New songs were added and the piece itself was just not accepted at the time. Then the show just kind of disappeared from our collective memory. This monumental piece of work faded into the recesses of American history. And then along came director George C. Wolfe. In 2016, Wolf created a new reimagining of the show entitled Shuffle Along or the Making of the Musical Sensation of 1921 and All That Followed. According to Wolf's 2016 interview with the LA Times about the original production, he said, quote, something huge happened and then something huge also happened, which was that we don't know anything about it. And I just became very intrigued by that dichotomy. End quote. Wolf's adaptation was a musical within a musical. It explored the original story plot and also showed the behind the scenes lives of the original actors. It had a superstar cast that featured Audra McDonald as Lottie G, Brian Stokes Mitchell as Effie Miller, Billy Porter as Aubrey Lyles, Brandon Victor Dixon as UB Blake, Joshua Henry as Noble Sissel, and Adrian Warren as Gertrude Saunders and Florence Mills. And to keep the black excellence flowing, Wolf brought on tap dancing genius Savion Glover as choreographer. It would go on to be nominated and win many, many awards. According to Wolf, quote, it isn't just how we present blackness on the stage. I think it's more interesting, how do we present who we are in our myriad facets by being black, by being American, by being Southern, by being Northern. So the characters in the show are trying to figure out all these things, not in a calculated way, but in the most natural expression of who they are, and that's in their art." End quote. Choreographer Savion Glover had this to say about the show. Quote, I don't think anyone has a choice to walk out of that theater not knowing something that they didn't come in with. There's so much information in the show, something we call edutainment. It's not just about putting on a show. It's about making sure that we continue to elevate the minds of this generation and generations to come." End quote. Wolf went on further in his LA Times interview to say this, quote, one of the first things I said to Audra was, you and I, we have options. These people had none and they made options for themselves. Now maybe she and I should have 20,000 more options than we have, but people call me up to say, can you do this? Are you interested in this? And that's a wonderful thing. These people didn't have options. They had to make their own and they did and they changed Broadway and they empowered generation upon generation upon generation of artists and that's an extraordinary legacy, end quote. We stand on the shoulders of our ancestors. Don't let their legacy be forgotten. During this time of quarantine and social isolation, watch their videos, listen to their songs, read the lyrics they wrote, keep their legacy alive. They paved the way for us all. Let's keep paying the gift forward. Join us Monday as we turn another page in the history of Black theater.